Kali Linux comes pre-installed with a number of powerful hacking tools, and one of them is Sparta. Sparta is a tool for finding and hacking network targets without needing to know a lot about the targets to begin with. We'll show you how it works on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you're a hacker or penetration tester auditing a wireless network, there's a couple things you need to do in order to find and exploit devices on that network. The first is actually gain access, but assuming you have, then the next step is to scan the network and start to go after the services you find. Now this can be a lot for a beginner to understand, and it can also be a whole lot of terminal windows open even for an experienced hacker. So in general, it's best to consolidate these things, and Kali Linux has a pre-installed tool that's really excellent for doing this. Sparta is a tool that can basically scan the entire network, find all the devices, identify the services, and continually go after them even if new devices are added later on. This capability is really useful to automate the exploitation of various devices you find in a network, and it can make it really simple to scan and check to make sure that there's none lurking on your network that could be used against you. That being said, in order to do this, you just need to have a computer with Kali Linux installed. Because Kali Linux has this pre-installed uh, to begin with from the version that you'll download from the website, so you don't need to download anything unless you've gotten a version that's specifically designated as Lite. If you have that, then you might need to install it, but it's just a simple apt install to get started. Once you have a version of Kali Linux installed either via USB stick, maybe on a hard drive, or even in a virtual machine, then we can get started. Now, if you're starting out in Kali Linux, you're going to want to check out some of the default tools. And one of them you can try is Sparta, which you can access by just typing S-P-A-R, and there you go, you can see the little Spartan helmet here. If you click on this, then it will open a Sparta window, and it will go ahead and do things like opening temporary word lists and take care of all the stuff in the background and present you with a nice graphic user interface. Now, if you don't already have Sparta, you can usually in Kali Linux, in a terminal window that's not busy doing all that, type apt install sparta. But I already have that, and it's already the newest version, so that is not very helpful for me. So let's go into Sparta and see exactly what is going on. So at this point, I'm assuming you are connected to either a Wi-Fi network or an Ethernet network, um, and this means that you have access to the internal network, so this will not work if you're sitting on the outside of a password-protected network and you have not yet broken in. So if you are part of the network, then we can begin to start scanning and probing around for stuff, and this will also work on external targets that not, are not part of an internal network as well, such as websites and that sort of thing. So to begin, we can click to add a host to scope. Now, this will require us to know the network address of a, or at least the network range of the network, and this is something that we can calculate pretty easily. So in our uh, terminal window, if we want to type ifconfig, then we can see our IP address is right here. Now, if we take this and calculate our network range, then you can see that this is a class C of private internet IP range, and the, our network mask is 255.255.255.0, which means that everything in this first part right here is our network, and we can just put a zero to indicate that uh, we want everything in this network range. So what we'll actually do is we can see the network is 192.168.0.0 slash 24. Uh, this will basically represent every possible, all 100, all, basically all 100, uh, 254 IP addresses that are possible in this IP range, all in one kind of handy expression. So let's take this and if we want, we can add this to the network range, but instead I'm going to do something else and add the host min. So on most networks, the host min, or basically the first available IP address, will be taken up by the router. And I'm going to take advantage of that to just go ahead and scan the router rather than scanning the entire network, because that can actually take quite some time. But if you're looking to scan an entire network, then you can just paste in the network range. In this case, it would be 192.168.0.0 slash 24. 
uh, and that will scan everything in the entire network. So let's type in just the uh, the minimum uh, IP address, which is 192.168.0.1, and then we'll click on Add to Scope. Now. It's really easy for us to scan a whole lot of stuff with Sparta. And I'm keeping a little bit light because the script really goes into depth with what, with what it does. As soon as it scans in Nmap, it'll take the results and begin probing a little bit further on the default ports to try to find if there's anything open and available for us to attack. After that, it'll run a sequence of other scans using some more non-standard ports than the 80 and 443 it initially scans for, and it kind of conserves, uh, conserves a time by doing this by initially looking for the most obvious stuff and then later on looking for stuff that might be more unusual. So first we can see that we found port 80 and port 443 and it prioritizes that because it'll also go ahead and as you can see attempt to take a screenshot and then start probing it with Nikto. So Nikto is running against both ports 80 and 443 which is the web server and then the HTTPS web server that's running on this router. So it's actually already finished on one of them and it's still scanning on the other, but we've already run through the first round of scans as it were. So let's take a look at the various ways we can break this down and see what's happening, either by services, hosts, or tools. So let's click on services and we can see we've detected HTTP and HTTPS. You can see the host it's been detected on, the port, and the state of the port. So we've also now just detected in our next wave of NMAP scans a UPnP, uh, let's see, a Linux, um, protocol. So we can see that the state is open and the port that it's open on and also go into the tools section and see what we can actually begin to do uh, about these various things we've seen. So here we can see Nikto has already been deployed against both of these targets and we can see the results of the scan which already have found a light HTTPD server along with a potential clickjacking attack. So there's some other uh, information like the server leaks inodes via e-tags and some other stuff a penetration tester might find interesting. But in general, you can see how this script is kind of going by itself. Uh, it didn't manage to grab a very good screenshot of this particular um, uh, uh, port 80 because it actually redirects you to the router. But that's okay because we can also go to hosts and then click on the port 80. And then by right, right mouse clicking on it, we can see a list of all the various things we can do. Now it won't do us much good to open this in Telnet or Netcat. However, um, we probably could do a banner grab with Netcat, but instead we're gonna go ahead and just open it in a browser and see what it looks like. So if you're curious, you can do this on port 80 or 443, and this should give you the information you need to identify exactly what it is that's sitting there. You can see where the screenshot could just kind of grab that, but the script after a second redirects us over to the actual login page. Now this is where we could deploy a brute forcing attack against this particular login, but instead let's go back to Sparta and we're going to take a look, oops, we're going to take a look at uh, what it's doing now. So if we find any services beyond, and in fact I'm going to add another target to scope. So if you want to do that, you can add host to scope. And this time I'm going to do the whole network and let it run for a little bit. and it will discover other hosts on this network and add them as it goes and then sequentially attack everything that it detects as open on that host that's been added. So this is gonna run for quite some time, but in general, I just wanna give you guys an overview of what the results are of these scans and how you can then start to attack things that you find. So let's say that we find a different service, perhaps a SSH or Telnet service. So these are both services that are used to log in and actually interact with the device that uh, is administered remotely. For example, a router or a printer or something like that. So um, if we go into Brute, this other tab here, we can see that if we actually do detect one of these services, we can specify the IP address, the port, and then the service. We can see that it supports a whole bunch of different stuff and uh, ooh, including uh, if we get the HTTP head, head or get or post elements for an HTTP login site, we can um, uh, brute force, it looks like Cisco, I actually didn't know that, uh, FTP, file transfer protocol, and some other really interesting things that we could possibly find. So this brute force program will either use the username and password if we just wanna use a single one, or a username and password list of which we can add one from the various ones that Kali has installed. 
Now, what our ultimate goal with this is to identify as many hosts as possible, add them to this list, find something that we can probably try to brute force, and then pass it to this brute forcing tool so that we can attack as many things as we can while we're connected to the network. You can see that this creates a really handy dashboard for using a lot of different tools, so I encourage you to check out this default Kali tool as it's a really fast way of getting to know what's on the network and then audit it really quickly, um, maybe if you have a limited amount of time or if you just want to go after everything at once. Now I'll try to let this run all the way, but these scans can really take quite some time. So be aware that if you're going after everything on an entire network, if that network is quite large, for example, there's over 200 possible hosts that uh, could be connected to this network just based on the IP address space, then this script can really, really take a long time, even in the first wave, let alone in the subsequent wa waves of scans, attacks, and then subsequent more scans. So be aware of this when you're running it. It is a really powerful way of interacting with a couple targets, but if you scale to try to attack the whole network at once, then that can really start to bog the speed of the program down. And there we go. Although it did take some time, we were able to detect quite a bit of hosts on the network. And we can even see that there are some more uh, different HTTP of websites that have been found. So we can see there's one, two, three, four different sites that we can now attempt to attack and run subsequent scans on, which you can see that Nikto is now kicking off. So as this runs, I'm sure we'll find more interesting things on this network, but I'm gonna wrap it up here because we, we wanna keep this kind of light, but I encourage you guys to check this out because it works quite well. While Sparta is an excellent tool for auditing wireless networks, it is particularly aggressive. That means it will go after pretty much anything it finds, and you might be actually going after something that you don't have permission to audit if you're on a network that you don't own. Because of this, make sure that you do have permission to audit whatever network you're on when you're using Sparta, because unlike other tools, it won't ask you for permission before trying things like brute forcing for weak credentials. That being said, it is a great tool to run against your own network because it might find default credentials on a maybe an IoT device that you forgot about or some other thing on the network that might be vulnerable. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts or feedback on the show, send me a message on Twitter because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.